Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, people, pets, and snakes that can fly. I am your host with the most, Jam. Welcome back after a month-long hiatus. Um, I had to lay low after I criticized Chick-fil-A. I had a couple of those weird delivery vans that they um, they use pull up to my house, and some men in um, red shirts and black pants wearing those funny little half-sun visor hats uh, came out, and so I had to skip town. So I apologize for the lack of content. Um, as you can see, I am on a couch. Well, it's not really a couch. It's more of a chair. Um, because what is a chair but not a tiny couch? But that's besides the point. I'm back, and I have another video for you guys today. Now, before I start this video, I have to make a disclaimer for legal reasons that this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Please don't sue me if you take this advice, literally, because it's not, it's, it's, this is an opinion piece. This is a commentary. This is not financial advice. Go consult with your banker, your financial advisor. Do not consult with some weird dude on the internet. That being said, in today's video, I would like to discuss why cryptocurrency is a bad investment. Lately, cryptocurrency has been all the rage. Bitcoin, the OG, that's been around. People have been goggling at that for a while, but there's been a lot more that have popped up, notably things like Dogecoin. Um, and, and I've seen a couple, I've seen multiple, and I don't remember half the names of them. They're always something stupid, like Ethereum Max or, or whatever. So I'm going to be discussing why cryptocurrency is a bad investment in today's video. Now, like I said, I am not an investor. I'm not a financial advisor. I am just a guy with some opinions. However, these are the opinions of a normal person who invests a little bit of money. These opinions are directed in this kind of advice, maybe not really, I can't, I can't call it advice. These, um, these opinions that might influence you are coming from the kind of casual investor who might be looking into crypto right now, the kind of person who might say, hey, I see that crypto is doing really well right now. I want to invest in it. First of all, let me stop you right there. Unless you got, number one, the kind of money that you are willing to risk on crypto and it wouldn't hurt your portfolio, or number two, you're going to invest so little that it's not really going to hurt your portfolio, you really ought to stay away from cryptocurrency, especially if you are just a casual investor. Now, if you're a big boy and you want to ball out and you want to invest $60,000 in Bitcoin, go for it. But even for casual people, investing something like $1,000 in Bitcoin is not a smart move because you don't have the kind of firepower, the kind of money to back up a major loss. Now, if you're willing to take that risk, go for it, okay? Because you could, in the end, make out big. But Bitcoin cryptocurrency is so volatile right now that you're really going to get screwed, unlike you would with traditional stocks. Now, that being said, Bitcoin is the safest of the cryptocurrencies. It has been around mostly the longest. It is one of the tried and true cryptocurrencies. However, it is not one of the best or one of the greatest. It is still a cryptocurrency, and it's not the best thing to buy into. But if you want to get into cryptocurrency, buying small amounts of Bitcoin isn't really going to hurt you as much as some of these other ones. If you want to sack a couple hundred bucks into Bitcoin, maybe you got some extra money, maybe you, maybe you socked it away for a rainy day and you want to try investing, but you don't want to mess around uh, with the whole stock market and have to follow stocks and consult with financial people, by all means, go for it. But know that you are taking a monumental risk unlike what most people would be in traditional stocks because Bitcoin is not affected the same way as, or I should say cryptocurrencies are not affected the same way as the traditional stock market. If you've got extra money, I would suggest putting it into an IRA, a Roth IRA, a savings account, bonds, something that is not going to move, maybe tangible assets. Just know what you're getting into and please consult with a financial advisor before making any financial decisions um, regarding investing. Um, if I had to personally give an idea of what you might do with it though, if you weren't looking to sit down and actually invest a ton of money or a ton of time into this, there's a wonderful app called Acorns. Um, it's pretty simple to use. It's it's like all these new day trading apps, but um, they round up your spare change basically on purchases and you can use it that money then to invest. Um, that's a smart move because you're really, it's more, for, that's better for a casual investor. But for the most part, if you're a casual investor, I would stick with something like Acorns or something like a um, 
traditional brokerage account. I would not be taking a big risk on cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. But I really didn't want to talk about Bitcoin all that much. And I've talked about it more than I would have liked to. The main cryptocurrencies I wanted to talk about are what I like to call fringe cryptocurrencies. Okay, fringe cryptocurrencies are cryptocurrencies that are not widely accepted and they aren't highly profitable. One of them is Dogecoin. Now, remember a couple months ago when Elon Musk was touting Dogecoin? I'm going to come back to that. And everybody bought into that and everybody bought a bunch of it only for it to be worthless. Well, that's because it it's a joke currency. It doesn't really have any value. And that's kind of how a lot of cryptocurrencies are. Not that they're joke currencies, but that they're not widely accepted. And so they don't have the same value. Bitcoin is pretty widely accepted. So you probably have a good chance of being able to make some money with it, even though it is still a tremendous risk. Other cryptocurrencies, though, are not widely accepted. And I want to take a moment. The thing that inspired this video was I saw some influencer on the internet. We're not going to name names, okay, because I'm not here to throw shade. I am only here to educate. Um, they were promoting this new cryptocurrency, and I had never heard of it, and I dug into it and did some research. And, you know, the kind of investments people are making into these things, this, this research has led me to see that people are sinking tons of money into things that are worthless. OK, just because big boy Elon Musk is on Twitter saying today is going to be a doge day doesn't mean you want to believe it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to take my financial advice from a man who shot a car into space. OK, does he have a lot of money? Yes. How much of that money, though, ask yourself when you look at people like Elon Musk, how much of that did he make as a big time investor? OK, most of the money he made has come through companies that he either founded or or that he had a big role in bringing up, i.e. PayPal and Tesla. He's probably made some decent money in the stock market because, you know, what billionaire hasn't, but his forte or his specialty du jour is not the stock market, okay? If Warren Buffett came out and said that, ah, cryptocurrency, you know, this is something you might want to look into, I'd be more apt to believe him, but I would still be very apprehensive about a guy like Warren Buffett. Don't forget, these billionaires make money when you lose money, okay? They make money when everybody buys, 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 buys so that they can sell at a high price and let you crash and burn and take the loss. That's how billionaires on Wall Street make money. They let everybody else crash and burn so that they can sell for top dollar. No billionaire is on your side, okay? You don't get that rich, by doing things honestly and ethically. You do it by screwing people over, okay? Nobody is worth $250 billion because they were an honest businessman with a dream and a hope and a song in their heart and they just wanted to do right by people. No, they screwed people over. They screwed people out of money. And most likely, if they're in the stock market game and they're a billionaire, they screwed you over, okay? People like Elon Musk, what they do is they get everybody, and let's not call out Elon Musk here because I don't want to get sued. So we'll... Well, say, Jimothy Smith, big-time Wall Street investor. He's got a big social media following. What he does, he picks a stock, a stock that's probably pretty darn worthless right now, and he generates hype around it. And he, because he's got this big social media following, maybe gets other influencers in on it. He says, yeah, this is going to be a this day. This is going to be a, a, a Bob's Bob Steele kind of day. Let's buy up all the Bob Steele stocks. And everybody buys. Jimothy Smith then sells while it's at an all-time high, and the next day, it crashes, and everybody loses money. But not Jimothy, not Jimothy Smith. He took a worthless stock and made it highly profitable because of his cult of personality, his influence on a very gullible sect of the investing market, young investors and new investors, people who are looking to get rich quick, or who are looking for a way to make a quick buck. And let's be honest, we're all looking for a way to make a quick buck, okay? We would love to double the value of our portfolio like that. But that ain't how it works. You have to bide your time. As Warren Buffett once said, invest like the stock market is going to close for 10 years. You want longevity, not quick revenue. Unless you've got Warren Buffett money, you shouldn't be playing Warren Buffett games, Okay. So this is how most people get screwed over. This is why people lose money in the stock market is because they get hyped. They buy the new stock. They buy the new fad. Um, 
Never invest your money in a fad. That's not smart. That's never smart. It didn't work for Beanie Babies. It is not going to work for your stock, okay? That's not how it works. You need to bide your time. So young investors and people who are, you know, new to the game, maybe they're retiring and they want to throw that money around. They've been saving up since they retired and they want to invest it. And they look because they, they're not financial people. They've never done finance. Maybe they worked as an engineer and they don't know finance. So they look and they see everybody's buying up stock X, not the company that sells shoes. I'm talking, let's say stock Y, okay, because I don't want to get sued. Stock Y, they're buying up all this stock in this company, company Y. And they think, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to buy stock in there because my favorite billion, this guy who comes on the news every night and talks about how much money he's made on the stock market is telling me to do it. If a billionaire is telling you to do something, like I have iterated multiple times, do the opposite, okay? They do not have your best interests in mind, okay? If Jeff Bezos comes on ABC News and says, you should invest in this company, don't do it. Chances are he's got a big stake in that company, and that company probably has very little value. They're trying to generate hype so that people will buy into that company, and then they can liquidate all their stock, get rid of it, wipe their hands of it, and then let you foot the bill. Invest your money in safe assets. Coca-Cola is a very safe asset. Coca-Cola has been around a long time. Coca-Cola stock prices never rocketed up and then rocketed down. It's usually stayed pretty even. There's been times where it's gone up and there have been times when it's gone down. But for the most part, You've never seen Coca-Cola shoot up 450% in one day. That's not a thing that happens, generally speaking. Safe asset stocks like Coca-Cola, bonds, traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks, hell, savings accounts, real estate, if you know how to do it. Don't play the real estate game if you don't know how to play the real estate game. Safe assets are the way that you make money. You know, you if you want to make money off of investments, Unless you are a baller and you are willing to lose a lot of money or you've got the kind of firepower to lose a lot of money, the best way to make money is by investing it in safe assets. Even if you invested most of your money in large companies that are traditional stocks, say you invest in Coke and other companies like Coke, whose stock prices never go more than 30 bucks, we'll say, 30 bucks a share you could still make out very well by the time you're ready to retire. And most people do. They generate quite a bit of money. You know, say you set aside in life, say when you first start out, for the first 10 years of your career, you cut your paycheck in half because you're single. Maybe you're single. Hopefully you're single. Hopefully you didn't get married too young and have a bunch of kids and all of a sudden you're sacked with all this debt. And hopefully you were responsible with your loans and you didn't take out too many and you were responsible and knew that student loans were a bad idea and you paid your way through college either by going to community college first and getting a job and then getting into a regular college or uh, by taking out financial aid or by, you know, paying and working your way through college. Hopefully you were smart. So let's say you are debt free. You are young. You are not married. You have no kids. You have a small house or an apartment and you've got a good steady job. The best way to save for retirement or to to get a little bit of money so that you can retire early, I would say, is to take a portion of your paycheck. Now, it doesn't have to be half. It can be a fourth. It can be a third. It can be however much you are comfortable with, and that will help you to comfortably be able to do this. Now, if you're single, like I'm using this example because it would be pretty easy to cut your paycheck in half and still be able to live pretty comfortably. That is assuming you are making a reasonable amount of money, say $65,000 or $50,000. If you are making less than that, especially if you're on minimum wage right out of college, you, you don't do that. But if you've, got the, if you've got enough to half it or cut it in fourth, whatever, take whatever you think is acceptable and invest it in safe assets. By the time you retire, you will be able to retire comfortably. Now, we, we, I'm not going to calculate exact numbers because I, I don't know exact numbers and I'm not good at math in my head. But if you are taking, for the first 10 years of your career, between one-fourth and one-half of your paycheck, and you are investing it in safe assets, well, by the time you're done, figure you're making $65,000 a year, right? So you're investing somewhere around 30 of that a year, 30 of that a year. You can comfortably live as a single person um, after, you know, taxes and whatever, and we're going to say that 65 is after taxes because we're not going to mess with that. So you're making $65,000 a year after taxes. You can invest half of that, and still live very comfortably as a single adult 
living in a reasonably priced city with a low cost of living. If you were living in New York, there was a big difference versus living in rural Ohio. But let's say you were living in an area with reasonably priced real estate, reasonably priced fuel, you drive a car that has good fuel economy, and you don't do a whole lot. You stay what is known as house poor, except not because you paid for an expensive house. So we're going to call it investment poor. You don't spend a lot of money. You're very frugal for the first 10 years. Now, this is not something for everybody, but if you do this, that is a good way to start generating money. And so by the time you're married and have kids, you've got kind of a little bit of, you got a cushion. That way, if you lose your job or the economy declines, you've got something saved up. Otherwise, you know, do whatever you want. It's your money. That's, that's, that's the point of this video. But I've gotten off track. I've been talking a lot about investments. This was really supposed to be about why crypto is a bad idea. And I, I guess I was trying to generate examples by saying, here's why you should do this instead of crypto. I'm not a financial advisor, okay? This is just the opinions of some guy who thinks he knows what he's doing, um, maybe not thinks is the right word, but who has who's, who's seen a lot and heard a lot and, you know, is just trying to say, look, folks, cryptocurrency is a bad bet, okay? It's not ready. In 20 years, it might be ready. Bitcoin, eh, it's kind of a safe investment. For the most part, though, stay away. Stick to traditional um, forms of investment. Stick to traditional investments. Stay away. Keep your money safe. Don't do stupid stuff. Don't follow what billionaires are doing. Don't do what's trendy. Just be safe. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. It may seem like that guy in the Lamborghini uh, is going to beat you uh, against your 1995 Toyota Corolla. But let me tell you, when his engine catches on fire a fourth of the way through because he was running that thing at 200 miles an hour and he was running it too hard and your little Toyota Corolla sneaks past him at 75, you're going to win because you didn't hurt yourself in the beginning. You took the slow, safe result. Very few people win in what I like to call a dynamite success. Dynamite success goes off like dynamite, basically. It means you're just all of a sudden super successful. You do something, and it just works. Like, you just get very stupid lucky. You know, some people say there's no such thing as luck. Some people say that it's all skill. And I like to believe it's all skill. But at the end of the day, when it comes to becoming ultra, ultra wealthy, it is just luck. You have to be really good at what you do. Don't get me wrong. It is a lot of hard work and skill. But at the end of the day, you still have to bet that people are going to want what you're selling, that they're going to want to invest in your company and your product or that um, you're going to get lucky, especially with the stock market or a stock that you bought or an investment you made. You have to just bet because that's all investing is. It is betting that you know what's going to happen in the future. And if that's what you want to do with your money, go for it. All I, that's, that's your money. But don't do it expecting to get dynamite success. At the end of the day, you'll probably make a little something, and you'll probably be able to live somewhat comfortably, but you are not going to turn into Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett became Warren Buffett because he got lucky one time and figured out how to replicate that luck, and there's lots of moving parts to these things. Go read one of his books. You'll figure out, you know, everybody wants to claim that they did it by doing this, and they pulled 15-hour nights, and they, they got down by the straps of their boots. In reality, they just got lucky, and that's all success is. You get lucky because you can work super hard, put all you have into a project, be working hours on end every week, 20 hours a day. That's a lot, by the way. That's too much, maybe 12 hours a day. You're working 12 hours a day every day, including Saturdays and Sundays. You are putting it all. You are investing thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars into this company, and it still goes belly up because at the end of the day, there's that little factor of luck. Right place, right time. Your billboard or your advertisement has to be seen by the right people. You have to sell to the right people. You have to get money from the right people. The timing has to be right. I have seen so many cases back in 2008 that people had these great projects. They seemed go-ahead successes. They were going to run away, and then the market collapsed. And all of a sudden, they all failed. So there was a certain degree of luck involved you know it's mostly hard work and skill but at the end of the day you gotta bet on that little luck don't bet on your hard work and skill your hard work and skill will always be there it will always back you up where you need to focus your efforts is on that luck not finding the luck but making sure that when you get lucky when that opportunity presents itself 
You grab a hold of it. You take your hard work and skill, and you mash them together. So in conclusion, uh, this has been a very long video and me ranting about a lot of stuff that isn't cryptocurrency, but if you've been a long-time viewer, you know that traditionally when I put something in the title, I talk about it for five minutes, rant about something else for 25, and then bring it back in the last three to five only to get distracted again. So my final thoughts, not being a financial advisor, just being an average guy who does a little bit of stock market speculation, not speculation, that's the wrong word, a little bit of stock market uh looking, I guess. I, I don't know what you call it. I'm not savvy on terms. I just have a little extra money that I like to sock away and that I like to put into very safe assets that I can enjoy when I retire or when I get a little bit older, um, when I might need it or when I might not be able to work or when uh, I get laid off or if that's even a thing that's going to happen. Just planning for the future. But I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial whiz. I'm just somebody who's a casual guy. And so I'm coming at this from the casual guy's perspective. And I see too many casual guys get wrapped up in the glamour and enamor of people like Elon Musk and Warren Buffett and think, oh, my God, I want to be just like him. They see all these guys on YouTube and Instagram saying how you can make this much money a day. And it's, it's just not true. That's not how it works. Know what your specialty du jour is. Know what you are good at. And then expand upon that. And you can make money off of almost anything. If you are good at selling houses, go get your real estate license and then go to the best real estate firm in your town that sells more houses or buildings than anybody else and say, what makes you work? Or get a job there. Figure out how it works. And then in a few years, you'll be able to strike off on your own and be able to do stuff. But some guy on YouTube, I'm sorry, there's there's people with great advice. There, there, I'm, I'm not knocking everybody who's on the internet who's giving advice. Some of these guys are just genuine, and they actually are trying to give tips, and there's a handful of them, um, and I'm not going to name anybody on either side because I don't, want, I don't want to pick favorites, and I don't want people to uh, start petty drama, but there are some people out there who are giving genuinely good advice. You know, CB, was it CBS or CB, CBC, whatever the one is, that was doing millennial money. That was a good show that kind of showed how people, you know, were working. So that's a good example of one. But um, at the end of the day, the best people who can give you advice probably aren't on the Internet, okay? They probably aren't writing a book about it. They're out there doing it, okay? If somebody writes a book about how to be successful, if somebody – this is, this, is, this, is, this is advice take to heart. It's advice I've always had. If somebody is trying to sell you a book on how to be successful, they aren't very successful, because if they were really successful, they wouldn't need to sell you that book. That book would be free. Or they would just give you the advice. But if something's locked behind a paywall, if you have to go to a seminar and pay money, or if you have to pay money to get the book, chances are they aren't very successful. And yes, there's exceptions. Every billionaire on Wall Street writes a book about how they did it, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about people that you've never heard of, that just pop up and they're like, here's my book. Here's how I did it. Um, if you hear an, or you hear an advertisement on the radio, successful people don't need to sell their success. That's not how it works. Okay. You don't sell your fame. You don't sell your success. If you are doing that, chances are, you know, it's like when a celebrity endorses hemorrhoid pills. Okay. Why is Michael J. Fox endorsing hemorrhoid pills? Okay. Is he, is he just, you know, really, not so well off down there, or is he broke, you know? And no no disrespect to Michael J. Fox. I don't think he ever endorsed hemorrhoid pills, but you know what I, you know what I mean, people. So at the end of the day, don't take advice from people who are going to tell you or going to coach you on how to be successful. Go out in the field, get the experience, learn from the people who are still in the industry, who are working in the industry, who worked in the industry, and then just kind of do what you got to do, but stay away from cryptocurrency. And with that, I would like to thank you guys for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Hopefully, I'll still be on this couch. It's really hot, though, so I'm going to go home, and I'm going to go sit in my nice air conditioning room and eat a pint of haagen -Dazs. Cool, Julie. I thought you guys were going to say goodbye, but I didn't. Bye.